There's also a link on Wikipedia, not to. Oh yeah, that's right. That was interesting. Somebody did link it. I'm going to go back and research after this. Yeah. I want to ask you about the book because I'm used to reading mysteries and thrillers where it seems like you get hints all the way through the book, mm -hmm. and in this book. I understand that the genre, the hints are not so important because I got to the end and the mystery is there are three people that are murdered, they're, everyone's looking for this uh, bejeweled gold falcon, mm -hmm. um, most people know the story. And at the end, I said, where are all the hints? I, you know, did I miss them or, or was the setting and the characters more important in this book? Well, I think it's an interesting book uh, for a couple reasons. Hammett really disliked the kind of book where there's all these clues and then things are resolved and then there's bi this big scene where everybody sits down and there's a big explanation like around the dinner table <laughs> mm -hmm. or something like that. He was like Agatha Christie, right? Yes, exactly, <laughs> oh, right. you know, where the, the right. detective sort of explains what happened. So he really wanted not to do that. Uh, the other thing that's interesting, I think, about the book and its construction is there are very few on-camera scenes, if you will, where there's violence. At most mm -hmm. All the real action happens, if you think about it, off-camera. Nobody's, I mean, Sam Spade punches Cairo a couple times and, you know, there's a little bit of slapping and things, but the murders and all those things happen off-camera, which is very unusual mm -hmm. for this, for that kind of um, Pulp Fiction type story up until that point, or a, a, a book, a, a story that would have appeared in the Black Mask. Okay. But I think the 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 thing that Hammett wanted to do was have the reader know as much as Spade knows all the way along. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times in stories, you'll see the detective knows something, but he waits to reveal it to the reader until mm -hmm. late into the book. But both by giving the clues in real time, if you will, and also this sort of objective third person point of view that's used in the book where you're not inside his head, you sort of are just like a camera following along Spade wherever he goes. So it's, it is an okay. interesting construction and I think he purposely did it that way because he wanted to achieve a certain effect. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's too, to me, I, I read that as sort of a, an American response to, to what the classic mysteries up till that point had been the Sherlock Holmes and Agatha Christie's, which are very much about dropping very, mm -hmm very specific clues along the way and you can follow along with them and figure it out. But then, I th correct me if I'm wrong, I, I, I think that this, the Maltese Falcon really um, brought, brought kind of the American mystery novel to what has, has gone afterward to a great degree, which is the character development. Mm -hmm. It's really about these characters and the interactions more than specifically solving the mystery. So you can, mm -hmm. you can get enmeshed in the book and get so excited and, and follow along with everything and then do you care whether you know, they find the bird or not at the end and what it is exactly as much as you care about mm -hmm. the characters. And the dialogue, the scenes in the dialogue right. are so wonderful. I mean, I don't think I've ever read better dialogue. Yeah, it's, it's like great. short and very efficient. Um, There's a lot of great um, images too of, of uh, Sam Spade, which I, I just started to catch on to and I thought, Hammett is having us picture things that are kind of juxtaposed. Very like there's a visual, great, a great it? line where he says he sneered at Gutman. He sneered at him without bitterness. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. how do you do? <laughs> yeah. How does that work exactly? You know, Let's but, think about but that. great, great little short, you know, short lines right. like that. Well, know? I think, and, and part of the reason that he does that so well is because he is choosing to write the book in this third-person objective point of view. So you, mm -hmm. you can't, you're not in Spade's head, and so he has to convey what all the characters are thinking by the description he gives mm -hmm. for them, which is a real challenge. And very few writers have done that sort of thing in the past. Uh, Hammer wrote another book after that called The Glass Key where he did it again and he even sort of took it a step further where he always repeated the first characters, I mean the characters first and last names. Ned Beaumont walked into the room and it just sort of really distances mm -hmm. you from the book and it's very hard boiled I think as a result. It's just a very, uh, you're, it's almost like watching a movie. In a, I mean that's why I think by the way the movie is so so good is, and the movie took a lot of the book's dialogue mm -hmm. just for Batum. In fact, mm -hmm. there's a story that when John Huston was putting the screenplay together, he asked his secretary just to type the book and the dialogue to get a rough cut that he was going to work with. Somehow that supposedly found it to found its way to Jack Warner, who who thought it was the finished script and he approved it for filming. <laughs> and so, because That's it's just it's so cinematic in a sense uh, it the it way is. it's written, um, because mm -hmm. perhaps because of this third person mm -hmm. objective point of view, but. Uh, it's interesting to compare the film and the movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, the film and the book. Is and you said you've tried to write in that voice, and it's very difficult. Yes, I wrote a book called Vulture Capital, which is sort of a homage. Nobody got this, but it's sort of a homage <laughs> to the Glass Key, and uh, it's very, very hard to do because you, you have to work so hard as a writer to get across what's going on in people's heads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm without either having the first person narration, which is often used in private eye stories, or at least having the third person where you can say, you know, Mark 
was hot and wanted a drink of water. You know what's going on, but you, you never get that that opportunity or that that cheat, if you will, when you're when you're writing it the other way. Mm -hmm. Challenge. Well, I think we're going to wrap up. I mean, we've learned so much about mystery writing and and about this book in particular from you two. And I, we want to talk a little bit about yeah. what's going on at the Pleasanton Library this month. Um, the Big Read program. They have a ton of fantastic events. Events. They've got movies. They've got events for kids. They have events for adults. And two in particular that we want to talk about. Right. We want to invite everybody to go to the library on Sunday, October 14th, to see Mark and to see Haley on October 21st. This whole Big Read program is from a grant from the National Endowment for the Arts. Right. And so uh, we've got just some amazing authors and amazing programs. So we want to invite everyone to make sure to go to the Pleasanton Library in October and enjoy some of these events and learn more about the Maltese Falcon. Right. Mm -hmm. And Haley, Mark, thanks for being with us well, today. Thank you, for thank you so much. Amen. This has been great. Yeah. Okay. And stay with us. We'll be back. I'll have a few words 